Hello and welcome to day 98 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aroleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather once again to dive into your word on this blessed day, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and reverence. We thank you for the privilege of studying your scriptures and for the wisdom and guidance they provide for our lives. Lord, we ask for your presence to be with us as we delve into the passages set before us today. Open our minds and hearts to receive your truth with clarity and understanding. May your word illuminate our paths and guide us in righteousness. Grant us insight and discernment as we meditate on your teachings. Help us to apply the lessons learned to our daily lives that we may walk in obedience to your will and bring glory to your name. Lord, we also lift up any burdens or concerns we carry in our hearts Grant us your peace and comfort, knowing that you are always with us, guiding and protecting us every step of the way. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love and faithfulness. May our time in your word today draw us closer to you and deepen our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Day 98, April 8th, 2024. 365 days Bible reading, Old Testament, Deuteronomy 9 and Deuteronomy 10. New Testament, Luke 12, 1 to 34. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 42, verse 7 to 11. Old Testament, NIV version, Deuteronomy 9, 1 to 29. Not because of Israel's righteousness. Hear Israel. You are now about to cross the Jordan to go in and dispossess nations greater and stronger than you, with large cities that have walls up to the sky. The people are strong and tall, Anakites. You know about them, and I've heard it said, who can stand up against the Anakites? But be assured today that the Lord your God is the one who goes across ahead of you like a devouring fire. He will destroy them, he will subdue them before you, and you will drive them out and annihilate them quickly, as the Lord has promised you. After the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourself, The Lord has brought me here to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. No, it is on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going in to take possession of their land. But on account of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God will drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand then that it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a stiff-necked people. The Golden Calf Remember this and never forget how you aroused the anger of the Lord your God in the wilderness. From the day you left Egypt until you arrived here, you have been rebellious against the Lord. At Horeb, you aroused the Lord's wrath so that he was angry enough to destroy you. When I went up on the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord had made with you. I stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. I ate no bread and drank no water. The Lord gave me two stone tablets inscribed by the finger of God. On them were all the commandments the Lord proclaimed to you on the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly. At the end of the forty days and forty nights, the Lord gave me the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord told me, Go down from here at once, because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have turned away quickly 
from what I commanded them, and have made an idol for themselves. And the Lord said to me, I have seen this people, and they are a stiff-necked people indeed. Let me alone, so that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make you a nation stronger and more numerous than they. So I turned and went down from the mountain while it was ablaze with fire, and the two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, I saw that you had sinned against the Lord your God. You had made for yourselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. You had turned aside quickly from the way that the Lord had commanded you. So I took the two tablets and threw them out of my hands, breaking them to pieces before your eyes. Then once again I fell prostrate before the Lord for forty days and forty nights. I ate no bread and drank no water because of all the sin you have committed, doing what was evil in the Lord's sight and so arousing his anger. I feared the anger and wrath of the Lord, for he was angry enough with you to destroy you. But again the Lord listened to me, and the Lord was angry enough with Aaron to destroy him. But at that time I prayed for Aaron too. Also, I took that sinful thing of yours, the calf you had made, and burned it in the fire. Then I crushed it and ground it to powder, as fine as dust, and threw the dust into a stream that flowed down the mountain. You also made the Lord angry at Tabera, at Massa, and at Kibroth, Hatava. And when the Lord sent you out from Kadesh Barney, he said, Go up and take possession of the land I have given you. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You did not trust him or obey him. You have been rebellious against the Lord ever since I have known you. I lay prostrate before the Lord those forty days and forty nights because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed to the Lord and said, Sovereign Lord, do not destroy your people, your own inheritance that you redeemed by your great power and brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Overlook the stubbornness of this people, their wickedness, and their sin. Otherwise, the country from which you brought us will say, Because the Lord was not able to take them into the land he had promised them, and because he hated them, he brought them out to put them, in, put them to death in the wilderness. But they are your people, your inheritance that you brought out by your great power and your outstretched arm. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 10, 1-22 Tablets like the first ones At that time, the Lord said to me, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones and come up to me on the mountain. Also make a wooden ark. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the face, first tablet which you broke. Then you are to put them on in the ark. So I made the ark out of acacia wood and chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones. And I went up on the mountain with the two tablets in my hands. The Lord wrote on this tablet what he had written before the Ten Commandments he had proclaimed to you on the mountain, out of the fire, on the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Then I came back down the mountain and put the tablets in the ark I had made as the Lord commanded me, and they are there now. The Israelites traveled from the wells of Bene Jakan to Mosira. There Aaron died and was buried, and Eleazar his son succeeded him as priest. From there they traveled to Godgoda and unto Jothbatha, a land with streams of water. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister, and to pronounce blessings in his name, as they still do today. That is why the Levites have no share or inheritance among their fellow Israelites. The Lord is their inheritance, as the Lord your God told them. Now, I have stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights, as I did the first time. And the Lord listened to me at this time also. It was not his will to destroy you. Go, the Lord said to me, and lead the people on their way so that they may enter and possess the land. I swore to the ancestors to give them. Fear the Lord. And now, Israel, 
What does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth, and everything in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them, and he chose you, their descendants above all the nations, as it is today. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him, hold fast to him, and take your oaths in his name. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Your ancestors who went down into Egypt were seventy in all, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. New Testament NIV Version Luke 12, 1-34 Warnings and Encouragements Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and then after cannot do more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, his authority has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man, will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven but anyone who blasphemes against the holy spirit will not be forgiven when you are brought before synagogues rulers and authorities do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say for the holy spirit will teach you at that time what you should say the parable of the rich fool someone in the crowd said to him teacher tell your brother Tell my brother, rather, to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I will say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then we will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Do not worry. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. 
Consider the ravines, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barns yet. God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world run, runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 42, verse 7 to 11. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Lessons learned from Old Testament verses, Deuteronomy 9. Humility before God. The Israelites' journey through the wilderness serves as a reminder of the importance of humility before God. Despite their rebellion, rebelliousness god remained faithful to his promises demonstrating his grace and mercy even when his people faltered god's sovereignty moses emphasizes that it was not due to righteousness of the israelites that they were chosen by god but rather because of his covenant with their ancestors this underscores god's sovereignty in selecting and guiding his people according to his divine purpose. Deuteronomy 10 Circumcision of the heart Moses instructs the Israelites to circumcise their hearts, signifying the importance of inward spiritual transformation rather than mere outward observance of rituals. This highlights the significance of genuine repentance and devotion to God. Love and Obedience the call to love and obey the Lord encapsulates the essence of the Israelites' covenant relationship with God. Through obedience and reverence, they would experience His blessings and remain in His favor. Lessons learned from Luke 12, 1-34. Fear not. Jesus reassures His disciples not to fear those who can harm the body, but to fear God who has authority over both body and soul. This teaches us to prioritize our spiritual well-being and trust in God's providence rather than succumbing to fear or anxiety. Treasures in Heaven Jesus exhorts his followers to store up treasures in heaven rather than on earth, emphasizing the transient nature of worldly possessions. These encourages believers to focus on eternal values and invest their lives in kingdom pursuits. Lessons learned from Psalm 42, verse 7 to 11. Hope in God. The psalmist finds solace and hope in God's unfailing love and faithfulness, even in the midst of despair and turmoil. This reminds us to anchor our trust in God's steadfast character, knowing that he will ultimately deliver us from our troubles. Confidence in God's salvation. Despite feeling downcast, the psalmist expresses confidence in God's salvation and praises him with joyful anticipation.
This encourages us to maintain faith and praise God, believing in his deliverance and goodness even in challenging times. Faith declarations from Deuteronomy 9 and Deuteronomy 10. I declare that God's faithfulness endures forever, even when I falter. I trust in his mercy and his grace to sustain me through every trial. I confess that my righteousness does not earn God's favor, but it is his covenant, love, and promises that secure my standing before him. I declare that I am circumcised in heart, devoted to God with sincerity and genuine love. May my inner transformation reflect his glory. I confess my commitment to love and obey the Lord, knowing that his commandments are for my good and lead me into abundant life. Faith declarations from Luke 12, 1 to 34. I declare that I will not be overcome by fear or anxiety, for my trust is in the Almighty God who watches over me with care. I confess that my treasures are stored in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. My heart is set on eternal values and the kingdom of God. Fair declarations from Psalm 42 verse 7 to 11. I declare that in the depths of my soul I hope in God. His steadfast love surrounds me and his promises sustain me through every trial. I confess that even in my despair I will praise him for he is my rock and my salvation. My soul finds rest in him alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Congratulations if you said this prayer. We're so excited to welcome you into God's family. Can you go ahead right now? Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you. And pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a pleasure. Having you here, I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.